What's going on guys? Back with another video. Um, in this video I'm going to be painting David Bowie and um, just explaining really how like my process and the steps I take. So um, yeah, so I'm going to be painting on, a, on an easel. I'm sure you've heard of one of those. Um, standing up, which I think is the best way to paint because um, you can stand back and like compare the photo to your painting. But um, you could sit down, I suppose. I mean, you can get like a table easel, but I just recommend like if you're doing that, just make sure you adjust it so your eyesight is like the, uh, reaches the center of the canvas, like while you're painting. Which is the same with this, as I've adjusted this so the this easel so the canvas is in line with. Well, my eyesight when I look forward is in line with roughly the center. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, um, I do recommend actually you, if you're working from a photo, print it off if you can, because it's going to be a lot easier to com compare it to your painting and you'll be a lot less distracted if you do this rather than use your phone. Well, I found that anyway, because you end up going on your phone a lot. But um, I've I found out the best sort of size well, for me anyway, is A5. I've printed this off as. Um, so that way it's not too big and you can compare it to what you're printing. Um, I'm going to be using acrylic paints. Just to paint, obviously, water, brushes. Um, what I'd usually do, well, what I used to do is um, I'd do the initial drawing with a pencil and I'd measure it. I'd use the grid method, if you might know what that is. But I find like it's, you learn so much quicker, um, you get improved so much quicker, actually, if you um, if you do it like like freehand, which I'm gonna show you how to do, and use paint and use paint for the um, for the drawing instead of pencil, which looks better anyway because you don't have loads of pencil marks that you can sometimes see under the painting. But before we start, I would suggest where is it gone? Using a hard bristle brush, like a, make sure it's, you want it to be sort of like long, longish, or so you can hold it in front of you, sort of thing, do like a loose drawing. But the reason the bristles would be hard is so you can drag the paint along. Because if you use like a soft brush, like you might know if you use acrylic and you try and, if you use a bit of water and you try and drag, it doesn't always carry the paint along. But um, you usually use this brush for oil, or this one I'm using, it's like a, I don't know if it's called a hog brush, or the bristles. But yeah, that's, it's good for doing the drawing phase, because you can just drag the brush along. But um, I think that's it. But yeah, set your can uh, easel up with your canvas, and then you want to like stand back enough so you can hold the picture in front of you and what I would do is just use it doesn't really matter what color you use I wouldn't use black to do the drawing you could use white if you want but I'd, if you use white I'd have a darker background I've done this like a yellow ochre and white sort of background with a bit of white primer so I'm gonna use I'd say a gray or something I mean, it's up to you what you use, really. You don't want it to be too visible, but visible enough so you can see it. I'll try and talk you through, through this. So I'm not sure if you can see that, but what I usually do is just try and measure it with the brush, really. So I hold it down the center and sort of just see what measurements we have. Like right now I can see the nose is on the left of the center line. Or I could do halfway, and you just see what you have. Like right? the top of the top lip is just by the center. But really, what you want to do is look at these um, horizontal sort of lines. Like the there's the top of the hair, hairline, uh, eyes, nose, mouth, chin, and you could, you could do the top of these collar neck, whatever it is. But just see where everything is really and just compare it. 
Um, if it helps, you can draw a center line down your actual canvas, which I could do here. So, and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to paint over it. That's why I, I think it's better to use paint because you can just paint over it with acrylic or even with oil. But, um, do like a rough center line and just looking at what we've got. So like what you can work from. So say the chin, that's, I wouldn't say that's a third. Maybe if you divided that into thirds, that's, pro that's just above a third, I'd say. So you can add that in. So a half, roughly thirds. You can draw, draw, draw it in if you want, the thirds. And then what do you say just just above a third? And you can all, you can always change it as you go along. But um so so the centre line for the face is just over from the centre. So that's the centre of the actual picture. So actually we could do the hairline, like the top of the hair. You want to sort of get the main shape in first, so you can see that's just near the top, so roughly like that bit. And you can focus on this outside bit as well, like along there. So you can watch as it goes around like that. And again, you can change all this as you go, so don't get. It's just to guide you through it, sort of thing. But yeah, okay, so we do the hairline now. So from, I'd say, so halfway is about the top of the lip. So halfway. Again, stand the back and measuring make it a lot more accurate for you. So that's halfway. And what do you say? The center line for the face is roughly about just over from the actual center. So like right there. So that's so that we've got the chin. So if we look at that. I'm holding it in the center. You can see the bottom right corner of the chin sort of just goes over the center line. So like, so like, starts like there, comes over. So um, that's the center line that we're using for the actual face. So like that, so that's the chin. And then we can go around with the jaw a little bit. This one's a little tricky actually. So I'm gonna try and get that hairline in. So we've got halfway, and half of that is a little bit above the eyebrows. So halfway. Hmm. So halfway, that's halfway between there and then, oh, and I say the eyebrow lines about there. And then the hairline from the eyebrows is, say if we, there's not a specific way you should do this, just like, just want to get in the basic, so like the hairline, the chin, the nose, like all the um, horizontal lines, the eyes, just roughly so you can measure where they are. So, so we're saying that's the eyebrows. And then halfway between the eyebrows and the top of the picture is just above the hairline. So halfway between there. So that's just above, so we say the hairline's about there. 
And again, you can always change this as you go along. So, now we can do the sides. So remember this is the centre line of the face and that's the centre line of the canvas. So, following this line up to here, I'm going to draw the hairline. And always remember to always stand back and look and then compare to the actual reference photo because a habit of mine, or well, I sometimes still do it, is you end up painting really close and then it'll be so out of proportion but you won't realise until you stand back. So it does help. And again, if you're not sure about the measurement or something, say like the side of the cheek, the, the side of the actual face, just try and measure it. So look, halfway line, like that. That's basically, half, I'd say that's about halfway. So you've got halfway line, half of the canvas. I'd say that's about halfway between the halfway line and the edge. So I'm gonna half this in half. Half this and half. So about there, I'd say. Roughly. compare with your brush if you, got, if you can. That's why it's good to have a long one because you can do this with it. But um, yeah, so we're gonna try and add some of the lines for the eyes and the nose. So, so that's about, a good proportion to remember actually is when you're doing the face is from the forehead, the, the hairline, the top of the hairline, to the eyebrows, to the nose, and to the chin, are all generally similar distances. But you can see here they vary only slightly. So the forehead to the, the hairline, to the eyebrow, to the nose is basically the same. And then from the bottom of the nose to the chin, it's just a little bit more than that. So, we could double we could double this distance. I don't know, I can put my finger there to measure that. Double that and it's just a tiny bit more than that. So, so that's the nose. Bottom of the nose. And then that's already given us the chin. And again we can always change this. And there's the mouth just below it. And then just comparing angles, like when I'm drawing the lips, I'm comparing the distance between the edge of the lip and the jaw on both sides. So I'm sort of just saying like that. Like. Trying to put some of the bigger shapes in, like uh, around the eyebrows. And the key is to just get the most accurate initial drawing as you can, and then the rest of the painting should be a lot easier. But um, painting this way will, I found, has improved, made me improve so much better. I used to just measure it every time, but and I used to think you couldn't draw it freehand, like sort of thing. So I'm gonna do the eyes now. So they're just obviously below the eyebrows. But another way you can measure is um, 
compare the diagonal from the bottom, from the, the right of the nose to the right of the right eye, and then do the same with the other eye. Like you're just comparing angles, like, and then obviously the distance between the edge of the eye to the bottom of the nose. It's like comparing, sort of. So if I compare that, and that's I'm sure it's gonna be roughly there. And to be fair, usually the, I'm just going to shade this bit in. Just, yeah, another thing actually, I would, if you can, shade some of the darker bits in just lightly, just, it just helps so much more when you're, when it comes to the rest of the painting. Instead, instead of it just being loads of lines. So you can sort of see. It's almost like a little sketch. But yeah, to be honest, most of the time when you do this draw, the initial drawing, it looks really weird. And you might be um, you know, comparing the diagonal to the nostrils. It might look really weird and you might be put off, but like... Because it, 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 most of the time, nine, nine times out of ten, it will not look like um, the drawing that much. But as long as they're proportions are right until you've done the painting it doesn't always look like right now this does not look anything like David Bowie at all <laughs> it's really weird to be honest but um yeah it's just a phase of a process of like correcting correcting yourself as you go along like see I think I've done that line too far over so I'm just correcting that but um, yeah, stand up, definitely stand it back. I'm just looking and comparing. If it doesn't look right, that just means you need to stand back and look at it and compare your picture to the um, reference photo. I just make a few adjustments, like here, I've done the lips a little, uh, a little too high, or no, a little too low. Just a few things really. Right now it's just down too big, but as long as you remember the mistakes there, you can just paint over some of it. But you want to try and try and get it in the drawing first, just to save you some hassle.
I think I've also done the eye. I'll just get too far over. Again, checking the angles. So, halfway, so just under halfway. That's a bit of angle. So halfway of halfway, so I meant, so that's half the canvas. That's half, so about halfway, so about. And the only time you really want to adjust your canvas, really, no, um, adjust your easel, is say if you're just working on, say, like the bottom half of the canvas for like a bit of time, and you, you're you're trying to make it accurate, you can move the easel so the your centre of your eyes are, are come in line with the bottom. So I can move this upwards so I'm focused on that bit. But if you scan back far enough, if you can, you don't usually have to do that. But um, if you need to, I would do it because it does, it does help. And I wouldn't go into too much detail with the drawing, you just want to get like the main proportions of things, you know. But I'm not going to sit and draw every little detail. So that's basically the drawing page done. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what I usually do is start off with some of the key features like the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Um just making some of the bits dark so I can see them. But because I've already used sort of a dark colour. I probably won't have to do this. So like, if you used a light color, I would go, I'd get a darker color, maybe not black, so it's just a bit darker, anything like red, blue, or you can use black if you want. But um, yeah, just go around things like the eyes, like the nostrils, the mouth, just anything that you think if you paint over, it's gonna be a bit annoying to really draw, because you don't wanna paint over your really accurate drawing and then it'll just be a, a lot a lot harder to paint but um we won't really have to do that here but where i've corrected this eye i might get a bit of white and then paint in the what's that bit called the white of your eye the sclera or something but i'm going to paint that little bit in just so i know so Something like that. It's a little bit. <clears throat> now 
Now, there's two ways you can well, you can start this however you want, but I usually start off with the some of the lights to make it. I usually start off with the lightest lights, and then I go. I'm trying to think what I usually do. Or you can start off with the darkest darks, just so you can start building on it. So I'm gonna start with. Let's start with the lights. So where's my other pen brush? So I'm gonna start off with the lights. The lights. Uh, yeah, that'll be alright. I might actually have to do the dark. Ideally, if you're if you're painting on a light background, you want to start off with the dark. It'll probably be easier, but. Just blocking it in. Just want to block in like the main, the big shapes really. You don't want to be doing the details yet, to be honest. So with the big shapes. I'm gonna do the darker shade actually. Yeah, if you've got any bright highlights, I'd get them in first. Mine are turned pink because I've got so much paint already used on my palette. But um, get in all the white highlights first. So we've got. Around the eyes. It's like the shadows really. So here I'm going for the dark bits of the hair, around the eyes, bottom of the nose, lips, chin, and maybe the top, just because they're the darkest bit. So this is personal preference, but I do like to paint around the edges of the canvas. I just feel it better. But again, that's up to you. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna start on the hair now, but um, reason being because it's next down in darkness to the darks. So you want to go. Well, what I would do is focus on the mid tones, I think they're called. So you've got the darkest darks, the lightest lights, and then in between, so slightly lighter, but still quite dark. from this point I can still see if I stand back and squint one eye and compare my reference photo that the eyes and the mouth are still a little bit too big for the actual face but instead of correcting it uh, with the lines what I'm gonna do is when as I apply the color I'm actually gonna sort of chop away at it sort of thing. I'll show you what I mean. So 
It's going to mix a little skin colour. So, for instance, where their mouth is, I'm just going to sort of paint over it a little bit, just to, to sort of check in with my um, reference image. And the eyes a little bit as well. So we'll come to that in a sec. Right, I'm not sure why I just went really quiet here. I think I just went into ultra painting zen mode. But basically, I'm just moving down a kind of a shade. I mean, so from to make it slightly lighter than the shade before. That makes sense. So instead of the lightest light, just a bit darker, or like going from dark to light. Also, while I'm painting uh, this layer, I'm actually focusing on the more uh, intricate, detailed shapes. Like, for example, on some of the features, like uh, the nose, the eyes, the mouth, etc. Right here, I'm gonna stand back and compare my reference photo. Wait, let's see if we can get into focus. Yep, and just see like what sort of corrections I've got to make. So already I can see the lips need changing definitely. They don't look right at all. Um, I think I've made the head, the top from, I think I've made like the chin go down too far. And maybe the eyes are a little too big. Oh, just the shape of the head just don't look right. I don't know if you can see. And also, the neck looks a bit wide. Well, you can't really see the line where the neck should be. I don't really like the blue I've used for the darker shade, so I'm gonna change that. So a few things are gonna change. Yeah, I think the head needs to be a bit wider. Maybe the eyes a bit lower. It does sound like a lot. Well, it is a lot, like the adjustments, but I promise you, we'll get there.
and it'll make you a lot better. Um, it'll improve your painting a lot better. A lot more accurate. So I'm gonna start off with the lips and now. Let's go up here. I've had to speed this bit up a little bit just because the video will be about 12 hours if I don't. But essentially, like just making the small adjustments actually makes the biggest difference. Like if your if your um, paintings still don't look like the photo, just stand back and keep looking at the, at your reference photo, and like the, just try and find the slightest little adjustments you can make, whether it's like moving the eye down a tiny bit making nose a little bit bigger, it literally does make a lot more difference than you think. Like, I, I didn't really like that dark blue, so I'm making a more realistic uh, brownie colour. So I'm just going over the dark, darker shades. And yeah, at the bottom as well, where the top is, I'm just painting that black as well. Um, yeah, it's just the adjustments really. And then once again, uh, after each layer, just start the process again. So like now I'm starting off with the with the highlights again, like the white highlights. And then I'm going to move on to the darker shades slowly. But it's just a process of um, changing little bit, changing little bits. Like once you've got the main painting down, just like adjusting it, and then keep going through the phase of. Going from dark to light, or light to dark, whichever way you want to go. Alright, this is it so far, but I can still see, comparing this reference photo, um, that the length of the head, like from top to bottom, it looks a bit too, looks a bit too long. If you see the head's like a bit shorter in the photo, so like I could make his chin a bit higher, and lips, lips still look a bit weird. And I still think the cheekbones could come out a bit. I don't know, the head at the top, like sort of by the eyes, the side of the eyes, it looks a bit wider. But it almost, uh, getting there, I'd say. Getting there slowly. And I've made, I've made this bit go in too much, if you can see in the photo. But yeah. You might notice I do paint like I'm in a rush and I, do, I actually can't help it. Like I need to, it's quite a bad habit because sometimes I don't know, I just get, I just get too excited. Like I just, paint really fast 
and like it's sometimes it's not the best because obviously this bit's sped up but um it's it's not always the best because you can make mistakes but yeah i'd recommend painting more chilled out and slow if you can but i literally can't once the painting starts coming together i just i, I usually just like adding all different colors and playing around like i don't like it to look just like the photo because it's just a bit for me it's just a bit boring so i like just experimenting and playing about like as you can see with the background i also found at this point it sort of still didn't really look like david bowie enough for me and it was stressing me out but like I realised I wasn't standing back far enough. Like if you stand back as far as you can and compare it, you can still see like the tiniest little bits. Like I had to go over the eyes and the cheekbones and like little bits, and then it sort of came together in the end. It is a bit stressful, but you just gotta like keep trying. And yeah, it's starting to look like David Bowie. Also, the red background was just too like merging with the painting as a whole so i just changed it to a cooler color which i think looks a lot better and lastly i'm just adding a few little splashes of paint and drips just to give it a bit of character this depends on your style really but i like for you to be able to see the process of the painting so i like to add my own little twist to it But yeah, that's basically it for the video. Um, but please let me know, do you prefer me to make longer videos and try and explain the process? Or do you just like seeing the quick like time-lapse videos? But um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you which one you prefer and if you want me to make any other painting videos. But yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.